Right people, how to draw a tattoo. Now this one's going to be a really classic old school kind of moth kind of design. And we're going to go through the whole way. So we're going to go through everything from the shading to the sketching to the colouring to line work. But well, I pretty much saw that in backwards order. <laughs> so it's going to be done in Procreate on your iPad Pro. And you can see here on the layers, click on layers, we have sketching, colour, shading, line work. Now I'm going to click on this and it's got assisted. So if we come up here, click drawing guide, edit drawing guide, symmetry, done. And what it's going to do now is going to make it draw on both sides. It just speeds things up because it's going to be a symmetric design. If it's not symmetric, you don't do that, but if it's symmetric, it just makes things a lot quicker. I'm going to start off with the sketching. I'm going to use the technical pencil on the sketching bit. I'm going to start off with the dark reds. And here we go. I'm going to sketch in a circle to begin with. Off that circle, I'm going to draw like a nice big sort of circular cylinder shape kind of coming down off it. It's going to be like the bottom part of them off. Real simple like that. The little going to sort of get a circular shape just at the top. Two little circles on the side for the eyes. I'm going to bring a line out and curve off for the antennas. That's the basic body of the moth. You know, we're going to have the skull face in here and get more detail in here, but a rough body shape, that's pretty much it. I'm going to shade out, come across here. Nice, kind of wide. I'm going to curve this. You want to come in quite sort of steep as well here. You know, if it's too flat, it looks a bit too squared. So kind of get like a nice kind of curve going here. And then come in. I like to come in sort of fairly straight. So you kind of sort of point it towards this circle. So both ends pretty much end up within this circle where the skull is. The second one's going to curve out just from behind that one. So you're going to come from behind there to about here and then you want to kind of curve up into it. So you want to get this nice V-shape and you want to make sure that this body bit isn't really sitting parallel with this. I like to have my lines all separate so everything kind of sits at different kind of levels. Like if you draw lines across, nothing really kind of matches up. And I quite like that. I think it just makes for a better design. Now we've got that in there, this is the basic kind of sort of shape of the wings, the body. We can start making a little bit more detail. So we're going to come in here, and it's all sketchy, so don't sort of focus on being too detailed at this stage. This is all kind of rough still. You know, we want it to be rough at this stage. So I'm going to go in two sort of circles here, it's going to be the eyes for the skull. A little sort of triangle a bit with a little dip in the middle just for the nose. Get a curve around here. Create two curves at the side, as if you had sort of circular shapes here curve around it and when you get to the teeth we're going to make a few little bumps just the bottom. I mean you can do the teeth if you want you know like this which in my day actually looks quite cool like that. You don't always have to sometimes little bumps underneath is enough. You don't have to add a bum job but you can do if you want. So I'm just going to sketch this little curve shape just around here. A bit kind of boxed in so it's a bit more kind of boxy. There's little circles there just for the teeth. We'll make that more detail when we do the line work. Curve this top part here. You want it to be quite quite rounded, not quite that rounded, a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, I like that sort of shape. You know, remember it is kind of old school, so don't worry about going too detailed, you know. If you want to make it more detailed, you kind of go more into Neotrad territory. You know, we want this to be nice and classic. I'm going to create a curve here, come off this bit. Second curve. And then once you get to this third one, I'm going to create I'm going to sort of little kind of bumps in the middle. Just kind of repeat this pattern coming down. Just kind of give that moth body texture. Just like that. There'll be more to it when we start shading in as well. It's going to reinforce that top part of the head is going to be very pretty much basic, just that line. The antenna is going to flick out. I'm going to do these little flick lines coming around it, like so. There's lots of different ways of doing the antennas, it's just I quite like doing that way, especially for old school. I'm going to reinforce that line just to begin with. I'm not going to do this bit here because I might curve this and I haven't decided yet. And now once you've got that, you've got to start thinking about patterns. And there's so many different kind of patterns you can do. Um, a very common one, having a nice curve off the side, which you can then carry through sideways if you want. You can have them stacking down, going more this way. You can have sort of like bumps come across, you know, where you haven't got these lines. So you could have one, two, three coming across. You can have sort of circular shape and then have the lines come across. You know, just try to think of it in terms of shapes. You know, we've got sort of semicircles, curves, you know, the kind of sort of shapes you want. I mean, you can even go kind of crazy if you want to have sort of like wiggly lines and stuff. That looks pretty cool, I quite like that. I haven't done it before, I might try that. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. See, sometimes when magic things happen, we don't expect it. So we're going to go for the wiggly line for this one. That top bit, which I quite like. 
gonna come across here my crate. Secondary circle, will that kind of work? That's what I was playing on before. Yeah, I quite like that. I'm gonna get to your chair. I'm gonna make this a little bit wavy. I'm gonna create the secondary line here, just kind of mimicking it. And inside that, I'm gonna have very old school kind of pattern, I have little dots just coming throughout here. I really quite like doing that. Just turn this around a little bit once we kind of get here. I'm gonna create some curves just coming off of here, not too crazy. The two little lines just coming in from there on the sides. So it's all about random kind of pattern works really. Double circles now if you want. Mm, not too sure about those. Sometimes less is more. You know, just play around with it. It's a good thing about the sketching stage, you can kind of go back and forth a bit. It's, you know, it's not set in stone, which is what I like. Gonna create a curve here, another little curve on the inside, so I've got a bit of symmetry over the top. Just at the bottom, I'm gonna go one, two, three, and again, get it again there. Just so I've got a bit of symmetry over the top part. I might have a little sort of line just around the back here, I might do dark black. I think and I like that. You don't want to go too crazy, but you don't want to keep it sort of fairly simple. Like I said, sometimes less is more. So I'm going to go to the line right now. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go calligraphy and use monoline. I really like monoline because it gives a nice even weight, which looks really good for old school. So now we've got that done, I'm going to go basically over everything we just done. Just check my line weight. It's quite thick. I want it thick, but not quite that thick. Let me get that and do. Click on your line work, go down to drawing assist, click on that and then it make it symmetric as well. So just kind of going over the lines we've done. Make it nice and bold and clean. You know, sort of just try, sort of try to think of it, you know, sort of, you know, sketching is very much sketching, so that's going to be sort of messy, which is what you want. Go from that middle two actually. We get 60 going across, quite like that. I'm quite like that, actually. I don't necessarily need anything that needs a bottom teeth. Let's go for that. And this line curving up here. Those two little ones. Get that antenna line coming in there. Take these lines in. Nice, big and bold. Get these wing lines in here. You know, don't worry about getting a speed ideal. I know I'm very confident with my line work on this. Um, it's just because I've got loads of practice. You know, if you never feel lucky to go slower, just go slower. You know, it's not a race. You know, I'm just used to doing this. That's all it is. You know, in time, you guys will be probably just as fast, if not faster. You know, but don't feel like you need to rush to get there. Get these lines in. Just make a little bit curved as it get towards the center. That bottom one, nice and curved. Like that. Get those lines in there. Ooh, I messed up my light a little bit there. If you're on an iPad and you mess up, you can always two finger tap, go forward backwards, three finger tap, and go back the other way. It's just a really quick, easy way of going back and forward. I think it's the one big advantage of like digital stuff, you know, and that's the fact that you can kind of make those mistakes. Now, because a lot of time it's making mistakes, you find amazing things which you wouldn't normally even dare to do traditionally because obviously there's no going back. But because you can go back in like just a quick little tap, you end up doing things you wouldn't normally do, and you come up with things that are pretty damn cool sometimes. Not all the time, mind you, mind you, you know, just some of the times. Sometimes you will just come out of stuff that's absolutely terrible and you can just feel free to chuck it away or just not stress over it. Get those lines in there. So pretty much, like I said, just kind of everything we've done at the minute. The interesting parts will come when we start doing the shading and the coloring. Well, you might find the line works interesting. Now, I don't mind the line work. But I'm just much more of a shading man. I love getting to the shading. I'm going to flick off the um, 
sketching now. I'm going to click on line work and I click reference. That's going to allow me to select anything I want now from any layer and it will click uh, from the um, line work. So you see when I click here now, it selects within those areas. Just make sure when you click, just drag and make sure the threshold is in the high 90s. That little thing up there. If it's lower than 90s, you're going to get a weird white edge and it's going to bug the hell out of you. So just don't do it. I'm going to select some areas that I know I want black. And I'm going to black those in to begin with. So these ones I want to be full black. And I'm going to do my shading my spray paint tool. I like the medium nozzle on the spray paint. It's a really nice effect. Click on draw and assist and do both sides at the same time. So again, this is symmetric. So once we've got that done, where am I going to go to next? I might go down here and actually I'm going to use actually the monoline again for this because I want to get a nice bold line here I think. So I'm going to bold in black and I'm going to leave a little white edge just around the edge parts. I really like that. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to do that for these ones. Sometimes just like a little nice highlight edge really does a trick, I think. Yeah, really do like that. Might do similar in these ones. And um, when you select, just make sure you select on both sides, otherwise it won't draw on both sides. So just gonna go around here, just leave that little highlight edge. Just like that. And always fun with old school, you want to make sure you've got plenty of black in the design. Black is very much key for old school. You know, if it hasn't got a lot of black in there, you know, it might not necessarily look quite right. I'm not saying that it has to, but you've got to find nine times out of ten it needs it. So now I'm going to go to the spray paint tool that was on earlier. I'm going to put a little bit of black just here, behind these bits, just kind of fading out. Sitting on these bottom bits, so there's a bit of symmetry going on. Just like that. Just a little bit of black just from the top there. And just a little bit just there. Yeah, mark how this is looking. I'll go down to the colour now. Again, click on it, click drawing assist. I'm going to start with the colours that I know I want certain colours, so I'm going to select yellow because I know I want these bits guaranteed yellow. Just like that. I'm going to select this kind of sort of like browny kind of sort of tone. I'm just going to come a little bit from the edge. Just like so. Just kind of give it a little bit of kind of sort of colour shade which I quite like. I'm going to set the areas that I definitely know I want red. I definitely want these red, I think. Yeah, I'm liking those. They are looking sweet. Don't want these bits red. Yeah, I want those red. Now you've done that, you can kind of sort of start to see the outer bit. So I know I want a bit of yellow now, I can tell from like looking at the rest of it. You know, looking at it, I can tell that I want these eyes in red. Now, if in doubt, just do the bits you know you want first, and then kind of come back to the other ones. And it just starts to come together like a nice puzzle. Where you can sort of try to work out, like, oh yeah, I want this bit, this bit. You know, and it just kind of starts to make sense. these areas so I'm gonna go for a grey here just gonna branch out with a nice grey now a lot of people seem to forget that grey is also a nice colour to use now, not, not everything has to be in like a full colour sometimes the colour grey is the perfect colour for certain bits a little bit of grey just on the side parts here yeah 
for the chin. Lastly, just a little bit, I'm going to go from top of the eye, just like that. You don't colour any antella bits if you want, but I quite like that without it. Turn off that drawing guide, I'm going to select this background. Just let me have a look. I can't decide if I'm going to have this bit here yet. Actually, I'm going to go calligraphy, my line. If you sort of draw a circle, hold and then tap, it'll make a perfect circle. I basically just had a bit of red in the background. Colouring these little side bits just here. Now, sometimes a bit of background does look nice. Sometimes it takes away from it. But it's always worth going to try. Now, if you don't like it, you can always just go backwards. You turn off notifications. Full animal turn off. Right. Yeah, I quite like that. That sort of does the trick for me, I think. Yeah, and you hey people, that's how you draw an old school moth. I mean, you've got little bits in here you can always change, you know, you've got bits here which I'm thinking maybe possibly yellow. And that sort of colours the whole thing the same sort of way. Yeah, I quite like that. No, that's so it's cold, a bit white in the middle. But there you have it all, that's how you draw an old school moth. I hope you like it. Check my videos, I have loads of other stuff, and if there's anything specifically you're looking for, let me know. You know, I'll be doing loads of tutorials here in a minute, so I'll be doing loads of tutorials in a minute, it's getting tongue tied with that. So anything you guys want to see, oh my god, tongue tied, anything you guys want to see, just let me know, and I'll try and draw it, okay? But for now, I'm a broken puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.